More chaos has descended upon the Play on Tabletop Studios. Thanks to me, Mini Wargamer Dave from MiniWargaming.com, I am this battle special guest host. In the first game of season, not three, I had an epic battle with Tack, co-founder of Play on Tabletop, and I feel like there is still unfinished business. While I cannot be there in person for this bat rep, I have sent reinforcements in this battle of awesome chaos awesomeness versus mindless Imperium robot things. This is probably one of the best games I've played in a very long time. Welcome Warhammer fans to 40K in 40 minutes! Playon's lead t-shirt designer faces off against the Chaos Space Marines in this 2000 point game, but it's not me piloting them, nor Chaos Space Marine Steve. <laughs> <laughs> In his heart, he's chaos. But instead, it's Mubin, Playon's first Patreon member. I'm Tack. Tack, T-shirt Tack, the Tack Marine, Tactical Tack, Tackaroni, and Cheese is back. But instead of his Ultramarines, he is playing the Adeptus Mechanicus. Mubin's a great player who lets his dice betray him, sometimes as badly as Steve. But at the same time, he curses other people's dice and my dice betray me every time I play them. So I have no idea how this is gonna go. The Adeptus Mechanicus list is made up of robots, robots powering robots piloted by robots, and robots that are worshiped by other robots. It's a fun list. No duplicate data slates, as Tack just wanted to play a bit of everything. Today we're playing Tempest of War. Uh, really excited to play a new play style. It's been a lot of this match play, grand tour tournament stuff for a while. And this is something fresh. Hey everyone, it's Mubin. I'm excited to be here. I'm gonna be playing some Chaos, uh, specifically Red Corsairs. I feel like I gotta follow in Steve's footsteps and make him proud. Mubin not only is playing the best faction in all of 40K, but he also gets to use my models. Ravage Star, Armies of the Veil Touched, is a line of highly detailed science fiction miniatures, which very shortly will have their own rule set and can be played on the tabletop. Tack and Tycho rush painted all of this in a week. It's actually pretty impressive. These models can look intimidating, for sure. However, because the designers and, and the creators did such a good job of imagining these details and, and putting the details on there, that as long as you paint all those details, uh, take your time, be patient, and paint all those details, you're gonna turn out amazing models to put on the tabletop. Leading Mubin's forces is Lord Tyric on Breacher, that he's proxying as a Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. This was one of the many incredible miniatures from the Ravage Star campaign that I sent to play on tabletop and asked them to paint for this battle report. And Asalian Dread Terror is proxied as a demon prince with wings. And because Red Corsairs, we have Huron Blackheart in all his old metal glory. We also see Chaos Space Marines with two wounds. Some are proxied using Veil Touched Valkyrs. Domineer and Unbroken are proxied here for Chaos Cultists. And two Rhinos to help them get around. To bring the pain, there's a Hellbrute with Multimelta, two squads of Obliterators, and one is proxied with Abominations. Wretched Sorrows are proxied for Possessed. For Demon Engines, there's a Venom Crawler and Helldrake. Today I'm actually going to be playing Tack, and Tack can have a bit of a history. No matter what we think, what statistics should be, or what the dice should do, has never happened for us. Also note that this battle was shot right before the latest balance sheet. Play on guest, there would be two wounds awarded to Chaos Space Marines, so it is played that way this game, but no armor of contempt in this one. This will be Play on's first 40k in 40 minutes using the Tempest of War missions. Players will score four victory points each time they satisfy any of the following conditions Control one objective, control two objectives, control more objectives than their opponent. These can be scored starting from the second battle round. Indirect assault. Players can also score an additional two victory points for satisfying one of the following conditions, or three victory points if they satisfy both. Control at least one objective marker that they did not control at the start of their turn. Destroy at least one enemy unit that was in range of an objective marker. These are scored at the end of each player's turn. When the mission was determined, two mission rules were also applied. Supply lines and warp lightning storms. We'll go into more detail about these when they come up during the battle. At the start of each player's command phase, they'll be drawing three cards from the secondary mission deck. Each card will detail when and how they can achieve that secondary, with each worth five victory points unless otherwise stated on the card. The players are going to need to adjust on the fly, depending on what secondaries they get, 
in what should prove to be a very dynamic battle. My answer to everything. How are you gonna play? Tactically. <laughs> the two forces now start to deploy. Deployment type is spearhead assault with angled deployment zones that funnel towards the center of the map. Tack puts his sulfur hounds down across from the Lord Discordant, most likely sacrificial lambs if Mubin goes first. Tack is making a risky move here. He only has two close combat units in his army and he is putting the infiltrators dangerously close to Mubin's forces. I'm excited to pilot this Red Corsairs and give those Admech a good whooping. That's, that's a bold move with the Hellbrook. That means oh, yeah. you have to go first or it's dead. You have I know to. I'm going first. All right. I believe okay. in the powers of chaos. All right, we'll see what the dice tell us. Here All we right. go. Apparently I'm not going first. Tack opts to go full aggression with his canticles and doctrinas. Protector Imperative improves the ballista skill of all Skitari by one, but reduces their weapon skill. The canticle, Benediction of the Omnissiah, allows him to reroll one hit roll, wound roll, and damage roll. As Tack is playing the Forge World Mars, his Skitari also benefits from the canticle. And here's the fun part. I pull these cards. Tack pulls three cards from the secondary mission pack that will decide how he scores secondaries. He pulled Area Denial. Five points if he has a unit wholly within 12 inches of the center of the battlefield and no enemy units within the same range. This cannot be scored turn one. Raised Banner. An infantry or objective secure unit performs this action at the end of the movement phase on an objective in no man's land. Secure No Man's Land. Five points if TAC controls two objective markers in No Man's Land at the end of the turn. I might just have 10 points, like, right off the bat. That was a uh, lucky draw. That was a lucky draw. That was a lucky draw. Also, in the command phase, TAC does TAC Priest stuff. Awaken the Machine gives the Scorpius Disintegrator plus one to hit. The Techno Archaeologist starts the Activate Advanced Protocols action so that next turn he has Hyper-Cybernetic Physiology. A fancy way to say that the Catafrons around him can ignore wounds on a six. All right, infiltrators are gonna move their eat onto that objective. takes that flyer and puts it in the middle of the field so that if anything survives, it won't be able to easily charge his front line with the plane right there. At the end of the movement phase, he performs the raised banner action. Okay, and that is it for movement. While there are no psychers for tech, there is still a psychic phase. And this is when the second mission rule kicks in, warp lightning storms. At the start of every psychic phase, each player must roll a d6 for each unit within range of an objective marker. On the roll of a one, that unit suffers a mortal wound. Uh, the Sulfur Hounds, on a roll of a one, they take a mortal wound. They don't. The uh, Plasma Cataphrons, on a roll of a one, they don't. Uh, Rangers, or sorry, the Vanguard, they don't. Wow. Tech Priest Dominus, nope. Plane? Don't we have plane? Nope. And the uh, Infiltrators, they're fine. Start with Cultists, they're okay. The possessed. They're okay, barely. Barely. Oh, 
Uh, and then the rhino, because it's in range. Still oh, yeah. okay. Uh, you know what? That Dune Rider was uh, three inches. Oh. oh. Yeah. All right, the Dune Rider takes one. Uh, the Onager is going to fire first. Hell Brute is the target of all of his weapons. No, not Brutey. He tickled him. All right, D3 shots from the Neutron Laser. Hitting on twos. D3 plus three. No. Does that kill him? First shot of the game. First death of the game. First explosion of the game. D3 right, wounds for on. everything in three inches. Disco Lord. Oh, it oh. takes a full three. No. Yeah. One onto the Demon Prince. And I think that was all that was actually in range. I have spent an entire week working with Taiko, painting up these Chaos Space Marines. I feel very conflicted about shooting them. I don't even know if I want to, but I need to win this game. So, now what? The Rhinos are not uh, Villa Touch things, so I will kill the Rhinos. Only two of the Arc Rifles can see the Rhino. Oh, we hit. Canticle. Yep. Benediction of the Omnicide to get three. Down to seven wounds on that Rhino. Let's take some plasma shots. Into the same poor Rhino? What does Tack have against Rhinos? Tack supercharges the plasma and gets 14 shots on that Rhino. Hopefully there's a lot of ones in his future because any hit of one will deal a mortal wound to that unit. It's only nine ones that you need to roll. Just nine. You got one. I get to reroll both of them. One for the Canticle and one for Mars. So, oh no. I made one. Two damage each, it's gone. Does it go boom? It probably does because it's, oh no. no. Roll the one. Five guys in the transport. Let's see if any of them actually go splat. No, oh, two of no, them go splat. Oh, no, move it. <laughs> Everything from this tank is gonna go into the remaining. Uh, Not the remaining Space Marines. Into the remaining Space Marines. Yeah, okay. Really good way to go. And so I only lose the one. Okay. So far. How many shots from the missile launcher? Freeze. Nope. D3 each. Three and one. So one has a single wound left. Energy cannon. I believe. Oh, you're so close. Reroll. Yeah. Oh, he gets it. The Chaos Space Marines live. Normally they'd be dead, but two wounds each and Mubin saves the last one with a command roll. I'm gonna name you Steve. Just one lone Chaos Space Marine managed to survive this onslaught of bullets and shooting, and he deserved to be christened with the name Steve. So I think the my murder robots are gonna go into your flip books. Uh, mm. Nicely done. Heavy ones that are on their shoulders. Oh no. no. I still lose one and another one takes damage. Two, yeah. So now we're gonna go with the Balistari. The Balistari, two of them can see the Heldrake in the back. Got the Heldrake. One of them can see the Rhino. Tack, stop shooting rhinos. Actually, just stop shooting. All right, uh, how many wounds on that thing? 12. 12? D3, D3 plus, plus three. three. So. 12. If I'm Don't max, do attack. Don't do I'm it. Max, Don't do attack. Oh. So close. close. All right, you know what? I'm gonna get greedy. Benediction of the Omnicide on the damage. It's gonna be a one tack. Here we go. Yeah! No! <laughs> Damn it, tack! Oh, nope, nope. First the Hellbrute, now the Hell Drake. What is it with you and everything that has hell in its name? Right up. Right up. All of my benedictions. Oh yeah, yeah one, one. Got one. one. All right, so I can't, I can't kill it. Can't kill it. I can maim it. Uh, that is five damage. Oof. What does a plane want to shoot? That's the question. Does a turkey die? I don't want to shoot the... I spent so much time on Lord Tyrek, the Disco Lord. I don't want to shoot it. It warms my heart that Tack does not want to kill the Lord Discordant. Moving? For the first time ever, you better live through this. You have to live through this. Everything from the plane is going to Lord Tyrek. Here's the last cannons. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. He has three wounds left. That is it for my shooting. I am not declaring any charges. Movin spends two command points on insane bravery and keeps Chaos Space Marine Steve alive, not chancing a morale roll. Tax scores both raise banners and secure no man's land at the end of this turn for a big 10 points on secondary. By taking an objective he did not hold at the start of the turn, he also scores two primary points for a total of 12 points. Movin has some work ahead of him. 
Let's see if the secondary mission deck will be as kind to him as they were to Tack. Mubin goes from 13 to 14 command points, which is ridiculous, but so awesome. From the deck, he pulls Raise Banners 2 and Investigate Sites and Bring It Down. For Investigate Sites, he must perform an action in the center of the map, and it scores him 5 points if done by a unit of 5 models or more, but only 2 if it's less. This one is tough. For Bring It Down, Mubin must destroy the model with the most wounds in Tack's army. I've got two models that have 12 wounds. So I'm going to choose this one, and that is your target for right, bring it down. So, so start of my turn. Discord Lord goes up a wound. He has four wounds now. Yay! So, movement. I'm going to advance the Chaos Space Marines inside there. Uh, Huron's going to hop out. Uh, what are you doing? Why, why are you moving Huron into the open? Uh, this is confusing. Demon Prince is going to advance. You know what? He has a flamer. He's going to advance too, because why not? Possessed, I need you to go places. Are they going places? They're going places, apparently. Oh, I'm enjoying this movement phase. Movement phase? Oh. Mubin uses the Red Corsair stratagem, more where they came from, and he now gets to remove a Chaos Space Marine unit and set them up again. Just like coming from reserves, but at its full starting strength. One Chaos Space Marine becomes five Chaos Space Marines, and he puts them down close to tax gun line. Very nice. So beginning of the Psychic Phase, we gotta do Warp Lightning. Psychic Phase Warp Storms hit again, and again it's the Dune Rider taking only one mortal wound. Huron? He's going to cast Warp Time on the Obliterators. Ah, Huron pulls the Obliterators forward. The Demon Prince is going to cast Delightful Agonies, which is going to give him a 5 up to ignore wounds. He needs a 6 plus. That is yeah, a 6. So, start a shooting phase. I'm going to start with Mr. Disco Lord there, because he's got a Bale Flamer. Right into the plane, I'm assuming. Right into the plane. All right. Who did? Uh, ooh, I take it. I did install a chaff launcher on there. No. So I'm sorry, but your two goes down to one. Denim crawler. Right. Into the plane as well. Okay. B3, because he's got two of them. Oh, do you want it? Is that is that where you use the CP? That's five points. That is in your way for charging. Five points in your way for charging. Five points in your way for charging. I can just charge the demon prince into it. So no, I will not spend the reroll on it. Okay. So it's still three saves at EP2. Okay, so D3 my three up goes up to a five up. Oh, make I one. Make one. All right, and two to three damage for a total of two each. Then they go down to uh, one. One. Yeah. yeah. So down to seven. All righty. Good old Chaos Space Marines back here. I'm going to I've go. got. They're all going to fire into the infiltrators. Got it. I've got four bolters and a plasma in there. I will not overcharge them. What? This one. Come on! So, start with the bolters first. You got eight shots because you're in rapid fire range. Wait. Chaos Space Marines kill two infiltrators. Now for obliterators. For strength. Strength seven. Yep. AP. Three damage. Two. All right. Okay, so then your target should be this because that's definitely going there. I'm yeah. not throwing that into the Stratoraptor. Not a single six. Yeah. <laughs> Obliterators take down the Dune Rider and Tack loses no Rangers as they get out of the burning wreck. That's it for, that's the end of my shooting phase, but before I move over to the charge phase, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a lovely, lovely thing called Endless Cacophony. One of my favorite stratagems, Endless Cacophony allows a Heretic Astarte Slanesh infantry unit to shoot again. Obliterators now shoot the Bellistari. Taking away some of those last cannons will be most excellent. Strength. AP. Damage. Let's go. I'll spend one command point to reroll one of those, and it's into a three. Okay. Oh, well, we make a couple saves in there. All right. Uh, I think this is where it's worth bringing a command point to try to fish a five. Command reroll, and no! Two of them are gone! That hurts a lot. We're gonna go into the charge phase, okay. which is what I've been waiting for. Right. 
Yes, it's the corn phase. Movement charges with a possessed first into the sulfur hounds and Tack uses one command point to fire Overwatch. Okay. Four ups. Mm -hmm. well, one Take takes one. the damage. Yep. You corn wants oh. it. Demon oh. Prince. Disco Lord is going to try and charge those dragoons, but with that flyer there, it's going to be a bit of a longer charge. I believe in him. Okay. And 10 makes it in. Didn't even have to use his oh, reroll. Uh, now I'm in trouble. I'm going to attempt to charge with this unit of Chaos Space Marines right into those Dacobots. Can't overwatch me now, so. A 10. Oh my god. Wow. Okay. Here on into Stabby Boys. Here on into Stabby Boys. Huron into Stabby Boy. Wow, okay. So now that Huron's in on that party, his Space Marines can't lag behind. They're gonna join in. Okay. Five? Five Does that make it? should do it. Yeah, that should do it. It looks like Tack and the Admech are in real trouble now. Disco Lord. You're gonna tell me you're gonna try and kill Huron? Really? You're gonna try and kill Huron? But then you can just interrupt with the chickens. Absolutely, I love to play a little bit of my games. Don't let me play the mind games with you. Make the right call, Moobin. Make the right call. The right call that I want to make is fight with the Disco Lord first, because he it's, can do yeah, murdery. Yeah, that's the right call. Lord Discordant, so many attacks. One Dragoon goes down, and here comes the big attack. And then last but not least, Check the techno the virus injector. You're going to roll six here, aren't you? I did. So, winning on threes. Uh, oh, I you think... take one. Uh, but yeah, it's two successful it's, wound rolls. I did so have two successful wound rolls, but before that, D3 damage from the failed save for single damage. Okay, so it's down to three. And because I had two successful wound rolls, you take an additional D3 mortal wound for each of those. Yep. For a grand total of four mortal wounds. Okay, so that kills the one, and then that takes this guy down to five. But he is alive. He is alive. However, because of... Does he of, blow up? Ooh, does he blow up? Nope. He does not. However, the Disco Lord did kill two vehicles this turn in this fight phase. Okay. So he gets to heal D3 wounds for each one that he kills. Okay. So he gets a total of four wounds back. So he's going to go back up to eight wounds. Now this is tough, but I think the right call here is to uh, use counteroffensive. Making a big gamble, Tech also uses chase taser protocols to try to get more hits on the Huron. Yep. Do I command point reroll? Do I really go for it? Yep. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. So command point reroll. Okay. It's yep. good. 50 50. Tack spends four command points, but Huron lives with two wounds remaining. Was it worth it? I don't know, Tack. Angry Huron slaps two infiltrators dead, and the Chaos Space Marines wipe out the rest. We're on the Chaos Space Marines right now, anyways. Into the robots. <laughs> I take a wound. So second last charger I've got to fight is gonna be the Demon Prince. All right. Into the plane. It's Spike. Uh, only one save. Do I give Nick what he wants? Come on, Tack, you wanna give Nick an explosion? <laughs> that laugh. <laughs> I'm gonna burn a command point, making, bring me down to six. Okay. For Machine Spirit Revenge. Lord Discordant, Sidonia Dragoons, and the Demon Prince all take mortal wounds, and then the plane goes boom. The good old Oh no. Possessed. Oh no. Last chargers are the possessed, and they will kill two sulfur hounds dead. All right, I believe that is all my fighting. Who wants to retaliate first? All right, so let's just go with the fun stuff first. And that's the uh, Sidonian Dragoon is going okay. to go into the Lord Discordant. So let's... He makes one and he fails one. All right, that's two damage. Two damage, you know what? I'll spend a command point and re-roll one of those. Okay. Nope, nope, he's still gonna take it. So he goes down to five. The cast of robots are gonna go into the Chaos Marines. Three up. Yep. They're okay. They're okay. Mubin had an amazing response to Tax Alpha Strike. He scores five secondary points for killing the Dune Rider, and for the primary mission, Mubin scores three by satisfying both conditions. Tack leads the game 12 points to eight, but Mubin has pressed hard, and Tack may struggle from here on. Let's go to turn two. Tack is choosing to go defensive with his Doctrinas and Canticles. Bulwark Comparative improves his armor save on the Skatari by one, but slows his movement. The Canticle, Shroud Psalm, puts everything into light cover. All right. No retreat, no surrender. No unit from your army 
can make a full back move during the battle round. Oh. And then investigate sites. Mm. Oh, I'm running out of units to do that though with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna burn the command point that I just got. Tack chooses to use the Tempest of War specific stratagem, New Orders, to discard a secondary card and pull a new one. That new one is bring it down. Oh no, that ensures Tack is gonna focus fire on the Lord Discord and because killing it is now worth five victory points. Tack scores four victory points as well for being on a single objective and takes him to 16 victory points to movement's eight. The tech priest here is going to awaken the machine spirits on this tank. Yeah. All right. Let's do things. Let's go, Tack. All right. Wait, why am I cheering you on? Tack brings his guns further forward. He protects his back corner with the Techno Archaeologist because it has another Omni Scrambler. Words. What are these words, Tack? Why do you bring these words with units and units with words that sound so wordy and weird in Tack and Tack? He also chooses to advance the Rangers to help them zone out the back from the Obliterators. At the end of the movement phase, Tech Priest will just heal the robots. Sorry, so it's back up to full. In the psychic phase, nothing took mortal wounds, so we go straight into the shooting phase. Let's start the party with the warlord that's been waiting to just do something. Uh, he's going to use his Volkite Blaster. Okay. Going to go into the Oblitz. Six uh, Rather not. No, yes. there's still six in there. Uh, so that's two mortal wounds and then uh, two saves. Okay. So no AP. No AP, so no. two ups for the saves. That's two damage. Nope. I'm going to go ahead and... He's gonna take that it. That is the most a Volkite has ever done. Uh, these two Castellan robots are going to fire all their shots into there because they, they are should. vehicles, so they can. Hitting the fives. No. All right. Good one, one goes down. Arc rifle breaches or heavy arc uh, breaches are gonna go into the Lord Discordant. So here's, I'm gonna burn a command point uh, for a command reroll and nope. No. So two, two four ups. Don't make them. Makes one, fails one. So that is three damage. Ooh, all right, so he's down to two wounds left. Tack is running out of guns. It doesn't look like Tack will be able to kill enough this turn. Tack, are you gonna split fire? Not a good call, Tack, but I'm gonna split fire because I've got one wound left. Catapron destroyers have to do a lot of work and Tack aims the phosphor guns at the Chaos Space Marines and then also uses the stratagem Wrath of Mars for one command point so that the wound rolls of six inflict mortals. Go boom, go boom. Obliterator. Yeah. Five up. Close. There goes the obliterator. Okay. You need fives, buddy. Yeah, you do. You, you got need this. All fives. And there goes the Lord Discordant. And that will score tack five points for bring it down at the end of the turn. Bullets into possessed and missiles and cannon into the demon prince. It does nothing against the Possessed, but now the Prince. All right, Missile Launcher into the Prince. All right. Neither. Fails neither. Ignoring wounds. Uh, I don't spike. So uh, still that is four. four. So five ups to ignore wounds. Ignores one. All right, so you take three. So three. he's down to half. That's impossible. Ooh, I only made two. I still have oh, wait, wounds. you can, so you can command point? I can command play reroll one of these right now, so I need a four. Yep. Nope. nope. So it's six, six damage total. Yep. So six uh, field on pains. And if you make four of these, he lives. You make me stuck here. So close! Oh. Sad days. The demon prince goes down. So the stubbers off of the uh, doom collar are going to go into the possessed. Yep. And then the big cannon into the venom, venom crawler. crawler. Yep. Hitting on three. Fell. Yep. Ooh, still fell too. So one dies and one takes. One uh, dies, passes. one takes. Oh, so. I need to spike here. Did you make any? Uh, no! Yes! Oh. Alive with two wounds. That denies me that center point. The last epic shooting, threading the needle from this Balistari into the Venom Crawler. Two shots, hitting on threes. Double ones! All right, for the drama, 
Oh! Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh! The Venom Crawler! Oh, no! The little spider bot that could! My Tech Priest Dominus is going to charge into the Chaos Space Marines. How far do I get? I get seven, which is more than that. Yeah, yeah, plenty. So here's my master plan, and it has to go very well. And I need to, and it means sacrificing this guy. Everything here is going to charge into them. What I want is I want to try to wrap them so that when your obliterators come in, nothing can shoot. Nothing can shoot. All right. See uh, how it goes, Tech. We'll see how it goes. I think this is a mistake because he's doing this to try and protect all of those units from getting shot at by obliterators. Those possessed won't survive and it's gonna leave him open to those obliterators anyways. He's committed too much. Okay. A three is a dead dude. You know, Tech, it just, this is where you leave the close combat to the experts. As a friend, I'm telling you, play to your strengths, make t-shirts. Would you like to counter offensive? No. Uh, I will declare these guys next. Okay. And the reason why is because they have to. Possessed, please. Hey. I lose one because there was a wounded one in there. No, that yeah, was the eyeballs. One. Yeah. So he goes. And then I guess it is the hydraulic arms. Let's see if I can finish you off. Pass. No, this is not where I needed you guys to save things. I can't think of a time anyone's ever actually thought to do this, but I'm about to reroll a successful save. I am going to kill this possessed. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah! Movement intentionally command point rerolled a success into a fail in order for that possessed to die and deny tech the protection of being in close combat. It's so chaos! I love it! Scoring at the end of tech's turn and he is denied aerial denial by the Venom Crawler. He couldn't investigate sites either, but he did score five victory points for bring it down. When Tack reclaimed the objective from the possessed and killed them, he also scored three victory points for primary. But there is still a lot of game left. Venom Crawler heals one wound, and Mubin scores eight for primary, four for holding one objective, and four for holding two objective. Mubin drew storm hostile objectives and battlefield supremacy, all objective based. For storm hostile objectives, he must take an objective away from Tack. Battlefield Supremacy, he must hold three objectives and more than his opponent. Mubin uses the stratagem New Orders to discard raised banners and pulls Defend Stronghold. He scores five victory points if he continues to hold his own home objective. It's anybody's game right now. And I still think with the units that I have, I can put in some work. Not many units left, and Mubin has to make the right move with every single model. I can kind of see why he would put his obliterators in the center because he's trying to deny me points. However, all of my guns can hit the center of the table. I don't think this is a long game play. Start a sacred phase! Uh oh. So far, the only mortal wounds by Warp Lightning are on transports. Oh no, the Rhino takes one. <laughs> so everyone was perfectly fine there. Huron's gonna do the good old Warp Time shenanigans. Okay. Huron Warp Times himself and is going to enter the fray. All right, shooting phase. Okay. Gonna start with the Obliterators. I'm going to spend a command point for Veterans of the Long War. Wow, okay. Strength, two, AP, three, damage. This is where it matters though. No! Three! Excellent rolling on the flesh metal guns. These obliterators are gonna do work. What would you like to just wipe out? So Those what? plasmas need to die. The... This is for you, Nick. One into plasma, one into breachers. Oh, wow. And one into the tank. So much split firing. Mubin is expecting a lot out of this one unit. Have you learned nothing, Mubin? You never split fire. Give me a one. Tap, we're gonna fail these. Son of a! <laughs> Failed one! <laughs> That's okay, it's still three damage to the tank. I'll take it. Tank has nine wounds remaining. You know what? Breacher's turn. Okay. Okay, so, so you've got ignore wounds on three damage. Three That's chances okay. on a six up to ignore some damage, and I ignore one! Oh my god, one. you ignore he's, one! He's alive! And last but not least, the destroyers. This is what matters. Wow! wow tag. No! That could have gone so much better for Mubin! Split firing did not work out in this instance. 
five, no, no, one splats. Yeah, Venom Crawler into those breachers. I will oh. spend a command point for Demon Forge. Demon Forge. They're okay. Now I actually have nothing left to shoot, which means it's that time of day again. Endless cacophony. All right. I hope this works out well for you. This has to work out well for you. Okay. So, strength. AP. Two. Only two damage. damage. Not great on the flesh metal guns, but now Mubin won't split fire and puts everything into the destroyers. And goodbye, destroyers. Ah, uh, yeah. You failed enough. <laughs> you could potentially save one if you command reroll. Okay. And on a four up, He's one dead. of them lives. Here we go. Four we'll up. attack. Oh. Yes. No, the obliterators take out the unit. Okay, this is where your exciting charges happen. You're on into that Dominus. No. CP. Yeah. I'm gonna see yeah. That all right. One. I have to. So Euron makes it into that party. Chaos Space Marines in the You've back used with your Steve. Removal. That's all you need. That's an eight. Horn wants it. The Venom Crawler is going to try and charge so, that Dragoon. Need an eight because of the crater. Venom Crawler fails to charge because of the crater. And the Obliterators are content holding the center. Uh, okay. On to the fighting. Okay. I will start with the Tyrant of Badab. Oh, oh no. no. It's a D3 each. Yeah, command you point try it? Yep, command point All right. Let's see if I can save one more. Nope. No. Uh, yeah, there's no way. Nope, he's dead. Good old Chaos Space Marines is back there. Yep. He's everyone in range. Yep. The Chaos Space Marines chop up some Skitari. Steve and friends kill three. The robots do nothing, the Chaos Space Marines do nothing, and the Skitari Rangers do nothing. Seems like nothing but a slap fight over on that side of the table. Mubin for primary scores three victory points. He also scores Battlefield for Supremacy for five points. That brings us to a tie game. End of turn two. Tie game. Wow. On to turn three. Tie game and Tack is running out of guns. The Canticle Litany of the Electromancer makes the Admech minus one to hit in close combat. Tack pulls Battlefield Supremacy and now must deal with the Obliterators in the middle. With eight primary points, Tack's score goes to 32, but Mubin is not far behind. And I also have Area Denial. 12 inch bubble from the center. I need to wipe you off of it and also control the center. That's fine because that stacks with the Battlefield Supremacy. True. The Venom Crawler has to go, and these guys have to go. I've got some work to do. He finally moves the Vanguard, but now they're exposed, and losing even a single model means he can't score full points for Investigate Sites. This is tough. So this is tough. A lot of uh, hard decisions. Warp storm. Uh, Rangers. Yeah. Oh. You lost another one. I lost another one. Yeah. Balastari, techno archaeologist, is okay. He's okay. And the tech priest. Chaos space marines. Rhino. Obliterators. No. Ooh. Take a damage. All right. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Going into the shooting phase. Okay. Four arc shots are going to the Venom Crawler. Two are going to go into the uh, Obliterators. Obliterators. Okay. Four arc shots into the uh, Venom Crawler. Because I need it gone. Venom Crawler goes down, but then he whiffs on the Obliterators. Last kind of shots are going into the... Obliterators? Yeah, last kind of shots are going okay. in. One, uh, and that's worth a command point reroll for me. Take me down to one. They both wound, AP3. Make one fail one. Okay, so one just dies. One just dies. The Bellicose Energy Cannon will go into the three man left. The Stubbers will also go into the three man. Okay. And then the Missile Launcher is gonna go into the Obliterators. So much split firing this game. <sighs> so four ups. Four ups. Nope, oh, that's all three gone. No. Missile Launcher. The Tack's target priority seems to be on point. Methodically, tactically, he is taking apart the last remaining units. 
The Onager Dunecrawler now split fires with the Stubbers into the Marines and the Neutron Laser into the remaining Obliterator. Chaos Space Marines from the Onager Dunecrawler. Four, threes. They're okay. They're okay. Into the Obliterator. Okay. I get Obliterator. Fives. Oh, he yes. makes it. I will declare the... I'll Breakers. declare them first, the breaches. Okay, I will spend my last command point to Overwatch. Okay. Mubin and Tack got the command points mixed up, and Mubin thought he had one left and fired Overwatch. This kills one breacher. Tack needs to kill that obliterator and finally score aerial denial and goes into it with the Dragoon. And the obliterator goes down, and that is a big turn for Tack. You know what? I love the missions because they change what you need to do per turn. It keeps it interesting. It does. I hate to say it, but Tack made some great calls. He scores Battlefield Supremacy and Aerial Denial for 10 points in secondaries by taking that center objective. Because of that center objective, he also scores three victory points for primary. Mubin, however, scores five points for Defend Stronghold, and this takes him to 29 victory points. Tack gained a bit of a lead, but I don't know if it's enough. Mubin goes up to one command point and scores eight points for primary, and this takes us to 37 points for the Chaos Space Marines to tax 45. Mubin draws three new secondaries. Assassination, Mubin must kill a character this turn or all enemy characters by the end of the game. Extend Battle Lines is scored if Mubin holds his home objective and one or more in No Man's Land. Overwhelming firepower can be scored when three enemy units are destroyed by ranged attacks. This is gonna be a big all or nothing, mm -hmm. but we'll see how it goes. Never give up, never surrender. Warp Lightning does nothing again in the psychic phase and Huron fails to smite. They advance so they can't shoot. Mm -hmm. So Huron is gonna flame into that unit there. So one. Yes! Tack gives up three points for Investigate Sights with that one Skatari dying to Huron's Flamer. This game is so close! Single shot! Plasma! Okay. Uh, Overcharge! You... Okay, uh, your minus one to hit. Oh no, this is all sorts of wrong! All going wrong! Six! No, that's Yes! Good. Are things falling apart for Tack? Alright, first charge. Those Chaos Space Marines into those little Ranger Boys. You know what? I am going to Overcharge. Or Overwatch. Help me out, boys. We'll kill the one if you fail it. One Chaos Space Marine finally dies, but they make the charge. Huron also makes the charge. So I might as well go all out, go with the fist. Magic, did someone order two sixes? Because I think... Uh, no sixes. Nope. <laughs> Chaos Space Marine boys over there. Okay. Um, Do you want to drag them in? Yeah, that's fine, drag them in. Okay. Five ups. I don't make any of them. Yay! Uh, that is, I have one remaining. Oh wait, no, I haven't fought with Steve yet. Steve! Yes! <laughs> Damn it, Steven. Steve and his Chaos Space Marine friends have taken Tack's home objective. This will also deny Tack gaining command points next turn. So the robots? The, the robots? Robots do one wound, but two wound Chaos Space Marines, and the one still lives. Tack rolls a natural one, and his rangers don't run. Movement scores extend battle lines for five points and three primary points too, which means tie game again. Mubin discards overwhelming firepower and goes into next turn with only one active secondary. This is probably one of the best games I've played in a very long time. Tie games are hard to come by and it's anyone's game. I, I have superior units on the battlefield, but I don't feel like I have this. This is, this is a lot of fun. He pulls overwhelming firepower and hold the line. With Hold the Line, this is scored if there are no enemy models in his deployment zone. Tack only scores four points for primary, and his secondaries are challenging. This is anyone's game. Tack moves his units into the center to try to get Investigate Sights next turn, because right now, Huron denies him the ability to take that action. He's moving everything into shooting lanes in a desperate attempt to get overwhelming firepower. A Vanguard dies to Warp Lightning and the Rhino also takes a wound. Oh, that means only him? one arc rifle shot needs to go through. So the Techno Archaeologist. Yep. No! Oh. 
Do you have a CP? I have one CP. I am going. I have to burn it. Yeah. Oh! No, nope, into a two again. Huron is down. Four arc shots from the uh, the, or the breachers Robos. into yep. the uh, Rhino. Can anyone? Oops! I got one. Rhino's down. On a good Dune Crawler, firing all of his shots into the Chaos Basements. I will go with the Steppers first. Okay. He dies. No. Nope. You do not. Neutron one. laser. <laughs> the Disintegrator will fire the Bellicose Energy Cannon into the Chaos Space Marines and all other shots into the Cultists. They're hitting. T shirt saves! Oh, you. Ooh. Three T shirt saves. All right. You only lose three. And then wounding on two. Three. Three dead. Three more. And then how many shots? Bellicose into uh, those guys. Hang on two. The tank can't do it. Tax dice are going cold. The Chaos Space Marines will survive! The Bellistari does kill two, but those Chaos Space Marines cannot fail morale and will continue to hold Tax home objective. Tax scores three primary points for killing Huron on the center objective, but that's it. Movement scores a big 12 primary points, and that brings him into the lead for the first time in this game. For secondaries, he pulls Secure No Man's Land and Blood and Guts. For Secure No Man's Land, he must control two objectives in No Man's Land, and for Blood and Guts, he must kill three units with melee. Um, all right, movement phase. Movement hides his cultists and Chaos Space Marines to try to deny tack points. And he wants to use Steve and friends to shut down some of Tax shooting, setting up for a charge. Start a second phase. Chaos Space Marines, go! Oh no! Oh no, one of them finally takes a wound. Cultists. You guys are champs. Chaos Space Marines! Yeah, okay, they're okay. out. So, frag grenade, number of shots. Into, into the Skitari. Okay. The Ranger dies, and that is one less gun on the table. Those Space Marines are gonna multi-charge both those boys right there. Okay. I've done 11, they'll make it in. So, and then you yeah. wanna stay on that objective. I wanna stay on the objective. Chaos Space Marines do one wound to the Bellistari. The gas has run out for Mubin, and he cannot score any points. There is still one more turn left, and with two of his objectives, Mubin could still take this if Tack fails at scoring as well. I could lose this. I could really lose this. Tack does score eight points in the primary, however, for having two objectives. His active secondaries remain as overwhelming firepower, investigate sites, and defend stronghold. Tack just moves to get shots with what little he has. The vanguard in the center will investigate sites, so that is two victory points right there. A breacher takes one wound to warp storms, and Tack rushes into the shooting phase where it is all make or break. Um, all right, so then I'm going to shoot the last cannons into them. Darn it. Not a six. Okay, so, so he's dead. The wounded one's gone. Oh no, it's just Steve left again. With the neutron laser taking out Steve, the brave and final Chaos Space Marine in that squad, this guarantees tax victory. What an absolutely amazing game that went down to the wire. Tack wins this one, so I'm gonna have to devise another plan. I really enjoyed seeing the Ravage Star, Armies of the Veil touch miniatures in this game. This hobby is so incredible in how we can all personalize the experience to our own liking. It is my hope that the Veil Touched can do that for you. There's a link in the description below for the Pledge Manager. This will be your last chance to order these miniatures for the first run at an incredible value. Thank you for watching this episode of 40K in 40 Minutes with us. And if you like what the Play On team produces, consider liking this video, subscribing to their channel, or checking out their Patreon, where they have exclusive content and a vibrant Discord community. Until we see you next time, play on, cause Korn wants it. He played this game better than I did. Sometimes even our best decisions, dice don't like it or the dice just change things and decide to tell a different story than we want to with our decisions. Give Tempest War a shot. That was, that was a lot of fun.